So Kevin says, you good. Mm -hmm. You're good to go. Right, Janet, it means you've taken your CE and you have paid your fee. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Do both of those every year. And don't wait till the last minute to do your CE. You can do your CE anytime between July 1st and June the 10th of the following year. If you do your education, you pay your fee, then you can, you can earn money, even if you're not active, by sending referrals. But if you're not active, you're not current, then you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. The worst penalty is the current and expired. Because if you stay expired for two years, then you're going to... Of you would want to have to take this class again. So always, always stay current. Okay. All right. Your CE must be done by June the 10th of every year after your first renewal. That consists of a four hour mandatory update and a four hour elective. If you are a broker in charge, then you've got to take the BIC up. The broker in charge update is just like the gen up, the general update, except it has two extra sections that are just for brokers in charge. But it's just like the other one, except for those two additional sections. If you are a broker in charge, and you don't take the BIC up, but you take the GEN up, you don't get credit for it. And if you're not getting credit, then that's the same as you didn't do it, and your license will go inactive, along with all your provisional brokers going inactive. Okay? So you must renew. If you don't meet the requirement, you go inactive and 16 hours of continuing education. Okay. Even when your license is inactive or expired, you're still subject to disciplinary action. So even if your license is inactive, if you do something that violates license law, you can still be disciplined by the Real Estate Commission. So mind your P's and Q's. Okay. Once you've completed your post licensing, you automatically become a broker. No longer have to be supervised by a broker in charge. But you do have to um, fill out a form. Okay? You have to prove you're su being supervised when you are on provisional status. Current means you have paid your money. You're good to go for another year. If you fail to pay by June the 30th, then your license will go expired. And with an expired license, you can do no work. Okay. A broker who was initially licensed before June 1st of 2016 must have completed eight hours continuing education by June 10th, 2017, and paid the renewal fee before June 30th of 2017 in order to remain active. Does not issue an initial license, the commission does not issue a license between June 1st and June 30th. The reason they don't do that is because if you get your license in June, you must renew before June 30th. You pay $100 when you get it, when you apply for it, then that same month, you're gonna to have to pay $45 renewal. So for that reason, they do not issue any licenses during June. If you take your exam and pass it in June, 
they will hold your license until July 1st and then issue it as of July the 1st. And that way you don't have to renew until the following June. And you don't have to do CE until not this year, but next year. Okay. Broker who was initially licensed on July the 1st, 2016 or later will not have to complete CE until June the 10th of 2018, but must pay the renewal fee by June 30th of 2017. So regardless of when you get your license, you've got to renew June 30th, no later than June 30th. Okay. Pay that renewal fee every year. And if you fail to meet your CE, then your license will go inactive until you do it. Once you do it, you'll go back to being active. Okay. Here's a couple more examples. The candidate who passes the state exam is on provisional status on inactive. The only way you can activate your provisional license is to affiliate with a broker in charge. He'll fill out a form saying he's going to personally supervise you. And once that is submitted to the commission, then you go to work on active status. Okay. If you were licensed on September the 23rd and does do not complete at least one 30 hour. No, we're not even going to go there. Not going to do that example because it doesn't apply anymore. That's talking about the three year, one a year, and that doesn't apply to y'all. Okay. You must have a current active license to practice, even to receive a referral fee. You cannot be compensated if you don't have an active license. Now, there is an exception to that. Let's suppose you have an active license and you have done the work to close a deal. You're representing a buyer, for example, and you've done everything to get that deal ready to close. And then you say, oh my gosh, I forgot to do my CE before June 10th, July the 1st your license is going to go inactive. Your broker in charge may pay you for that closing, even though you're not active because you did the work while you were active. License law says he may pay you. Now that's up to company policy. So when you go to work for a firm, you'll have to read their company policy. And it may say, if your license goes inactive, they will not pay you. But license law says they may, not they must. Okay. All right. How do you reinstate? Talked about this a little bit earlier. Do the CE 16 hours reinstate or if it's your license renewal that kept you from being able to work, then you've got to pay the $45 plus a $45 late fee. And if it's been more than six months, what do you have to do? Pay the money and take a 30 hour course. If it's been more than two years, what do you have to do? Start all over. Two, two years expired. You're going to take this class again. Yeah, if you want your license again. Okay. All right. Brokers in charge have to supervise provisional brokers. The rule says they personally and directly 
supervise you. They're supposed to look at everything you do to make sure it was done correctly as a provisional broker. And if you do something wrong and the commission wants to talk to you about it, then your broker in charge is going to have to go to Raleigh with you. They will look at you and say, why did you do what you did? And you'll explain it. Then they're going to look to your broker in charge and say, why didn't you supervise better? So they would not have made this mistake. So both of you could get disciplined by the commission because you did something wrong while you are on provisional status. Some students say, well, I want to stay on provisional status as long as I can. Well, that's a good argument. And others say, I want to get rid of it as soon as I can. That's a good argument too. It's up to individual preference as to what you do. But that broker in charge is responsible for everything you do as a provisional broker. Payment of your fees, June the 30th. June the 30th of every year, regardless of when you get your license. <laughs> How are you going to prove if a client says to you, how do I know you have a real estate license? How are you going to prove that to them? You're probably not going to carry that big 11 by 14 framed license around with you. But what are you going to do? Pocket card, right. Pocket card. And now that pocket card can be downloaded to your phone. Or you can print a copy off carry that copy with you or the commission will make a pocket card for you they'll print it on card stock and mail it to you for a fee of five dollars but carry it with you at all times when you are practicing real estate and you must show it to be entered into a post licensing class and to be admitted to CE. So as soon as you get a license, go ahead and download that pocket card to your phone. Because we all have our phones with us all the time anyway. If you've had it on your phone, then that's the most convenient way to show it when you're entering a class. If you change anything, about your information with the real estate commission you've got to notify them of that change within 10 days name if you have a name change if you your home address changes your office address changes your email address your telephone number any of those things change you must notify the commission within 10 days of the change. If you change firms, you, the broker that you are leaving has to notify the commission that you, he is not your supervising broker any longer. The one you go to has to notify the commission that they are your supervising broker and you have to notify them that your firm address has changed. So if you leave one firm and go to another, the commission gets notified three times that you have made that change. So don't forget to do it too, because if the two brokers notify them and you don't, then they're going to say, you had 10 days to do that. Why didn't you do it? So get it done. And ladies, if you have a name change, if you get married and take your husband's name or you get divorced and drop the husband's name or whatever, you've got to do proof of the name change. Send the commission a document 
showing what name you have changed to. If you are committed of a crime, you've got to notify the commission. If you are disciplined by another licensing board, you must notify the commission. Let's say that you are a broker and you are also a massage therapist. You've got a license. If you get disciplined by that massage therapy licensures, then you've got to report that to the real estate commission. And if you are convicted of a crime, you've got to notify the commission and you have 60 days from the conviction to do that. You think he was decent looking one time? He looks pretty scary. Um, but don't forget to do that. And y'all, you may have a test question that says, John Jones was arrested for drunk driving. When does he have to notify the commission? In 10 days. What would you say? 10 days. He was arrested for DUI. When does he notify the commission? Right. 60 days after the conviction. Not 60 days after the incident takes place, but 60 days after you are convicted. Okay. If a provision.